Hey guys, Silver Surfer here. I wanted to check back in on the topic of this idle integral airflow. I published a video a few days ago and I got to talking with Matt Sanford about it and he's like, man, I'm not really sure you did your due diligence on testing. And I'm like, wait, you're, to you're totally right. So I actually unpublished that video and I think by the time you see this one, I'll have republished it because at its core, I think it's all good, but um, I want to augment that with some more interesting information and tests. So I have three tune files and three log files that I, I want to show you. So this is the first log file. And um, the only thing I changed, the, kind of what Matt was saying, it was uh, I don't think you changed just the MBT by itself. You changed several things. And so I went back and I did that. And... Uh, it looks like, I'll give you a clue, um, it looks like MBT and virtual torque kind of work hand in hand in this. So this is the first test. Um, I'm comparing this against the standard factory tune. And you can see here, it wants 22 degrees for at MBT. My um, idle is at 0.24 grams so basically i said all right well i need to make prevent interpolation issues we'll make 0.32 grams also zero so you can see i have this little plateau down here for zero so other than that um, all the other items for the test um, i mean we're only changing mbt and virtual torque so let's see what happens so let's look at the log file for this so in here the one really to look at is this steady state error. And you can see integral is gonna follow it, right? So, you know, you can see desired error 14.69 is, is these items all added up here. So if steady state is low, integral will go high. If steady state is high, integral will go low. Proportional, like I said in the last video, pretty much, I don't wanna say useless, but it doesn't do much. It's always hovering at zero. So here for this particular test, you can see steady state error was 9.29. Um, integral, not that it's that important, it is what it is, 5.4. And you can see negative, or uh, the torque is negative nine. And this is the other part that I didn't discuss. If we come over to here, we go to virtual torque and we look at this, you can see the flat area, right? This idle zone. I just basically said, well, let's take torque out of that area in the idle region. And I'm commanding 850 RPMs for my idle. So I kind of left everything else untouched over here, but just this area and really 0.24, we're kind of in this region here. So um, you can see, if we go back to the log, how the ECM is happily idling away. The crankshaft should be going the opposite direction, I guess. I don't know, but it's still idling. Um, spark, you know, I'm commanding 18 degrees, hence this line, reference line here. So let's go to the next test then and see what it does. So we have this one here. And so same thing, I look, I'll compare to the previous one so we can see the change. So MBT has changed from zero. We are now at 20 degrees here. And if we go to our torque model, you can see all of these are just the plain color. So no change to the torque. All right, let's look at the log file and see we are on 30 right here. And not much has changed. Our steady state error is 9.29 grams. Integral, you can see it's kind of going down, right? If we go down here, we can see it dip down. But our spark still at 18. We still have negative torque. So, changing MBT alone did not really seem to impact the steady state error. But, if we now go to this one, and let me compare then to the original one here. We can now see we have some changes to the torque. So, if we go here to virtual torque, and we look, you can see that in this idle zone well rarely we're at 13 but either way this the first three rows over here i've raised i've increased it all right and if we go to 
And here um, we can see we were originally at zero, but unchanged, right? The last test, this was 20, right? And if we go to compare and we look at the very last one here, it's no change, right? So we, we've only added torque, virtual torque. So when we look at this guy, interestingly enough, look at this. Steady state air jumps from 9.29 to 16.85. And integral goes negative for the first time since I've owned and started tuning this car. And actually goes way negative. Uh, maybe not way negative, but negative one. That's more than a minimal amount. And we can also see that torque jumps um, from negatives to correspondingly high. Now, if you have a manual car and this integral bothers you, it's probably okay to mess with that virtual torque. If you are an auto, maybe not so much, um, especially if you have to lower it to make a change. So um, the virtual torque is going to impact how much pressure the transmission uses to open and close those clutches. If you underreport the torque, it's not going to use a lot of pressure and those clutches will slip, cause heat, shear off friction material into the fluid and eventually cause transmission failure. So I am not telling you to lower the torque or tune around virtual torque just to get your steady state and integral air where they need to be. Probably a minor thing, um, but it all kind of plays together. And you know, Matt Sanford got back to me. He did some testing on a Corvette this week, and he, he found the opposite where lowering the virtual torque uh, seemed to increase the air. Uh, or actually, it went the other way. Hang on, let me find the note. Okay, so this is the message he sent me. Um, this was from that 2013 Grand Sport Corvette. Um, and leaving MBT alone and adding in some tracting uh, just torque alone, you can see integral went higher, which means that steady state air went lower and integral is compensating. But everything else, even changing MBT, uh, didn't really seem to have an effect. So there's some weird stuff going on behind the scenes, and it may be different uh, for each you know factory calibration because this Grand Sport should have a factory LS3, but its MBT table was in the high 30s and 40s in the idle zone, whereas you saw from my stock vehicle, it was uh, in the, what, 22 range or something? Again, what was it? Now I've forgotten. So you can see stock was, yeah, 22. And then if we do a compare and we go to... This Corvette uh, 2013, and we look at this bad boy, I mean, it's way higher. It's in the 40s and 38s. Why would that be when you have the same engine with the same compression ratio, same head, same cam? I don't know. Uh, so there's going to be some weird combinations depending on uh, where your MBT is, where your virtual torque is, and then where you have your idle spark, your RPMs, and then as well as, um, I don't know, who knows what other stuff. But anyway, just a quick update. I'm going to keep playing with this. If I find anything crazy, I'll let you know. All right, later.